Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Shalom. Brother Thuwam, coming at you with these precepts and another cold cut, giving all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, right? Double honors to the elders that have been pushing this truth for decades and decades, right? And shout out to all of the brothers and sisters that are um, in this truth, right? Worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth, right? In this uh, particular cold cup, we're going to be getting into the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit and baptism, right? Holy Spirit and baptism. Start off with the book of John, chapter 15, right? And I'm going to start at verse 15. Salaki, John 14 and 15. Salaki, John 14 and 15. He said, if ye love me, keep my commandments, right? Verse 16 says, and I will pray the Father... And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Right? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Right? Hey, keep the Lord's commandments and, the, and Yahweh Shah is going to send the comforter, right? The spirit of truth. Right? Let me get a, pre, a quick precept. Right? Psalms, Psalms 111, Psalms 111 and 10. It says, fear of the Lord is be the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever, right? So, Yahweh Shai said, if you, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I'm going to pray to the Father, he's going to send that comforter down, right? That comforter, even the spirit of truth, right? That the world can't receive, but you can. He's going to abide with you and in you, right? We jump down to verse um, 26. He says this. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. See that? The comforter, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. They all go hand in hand. Verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Right? So the Holy Spirit is going to be that spirit of truth that's going to bring things to remembrance. Right? And having these things in remembrance, that's going to comfort you. Right? In these times to come, we got Jacob's trouble coming up. And during that time, you're going to need something to hold on to. Right? That spirit is that something to hold on to to keep you going forward. To keep you girded in your faith, to keep you pressing forward and believing on Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, that in these times of trouble, He's going to deliver you, right? That's that comforter, right? That spirit of truth, understanding that you're an Israelite, right? Understanding that you're the Most High's chosen people, you know what I'm saying? And that He chose you, and that the reason we go through the things we go through is because we broke His commandments. So He's telling you, keep the commandments, and He's going to send that Holy Spirit down, right? So at the end of the day, that's what we need to be doing is keeping the commandments that uh, the Most High gave us, right? That Yahweh Shah, through Yahweh Shah, right? I'm going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 13, right? 1 Corinthians, so like your 2 and verse 13, right? Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Right? So, keeping these commandments as an Israelite, right? That's how you get that understanding. Right. And that's how you get that spiritual discernment. And that's how you understand things when you start reading the scriptures and getting the, uh, that's how you get the deeper understanding of the parables. That's how you get the deeper understanding of the dark sayings. Right. But a natural man, he's not going to get these things. Right. You tell a natural man everything is spiritual, but they're not going to discern that. They're not going to discern and understand that this person has a spirit. And at the time, you know, at, at, at any given time. The Lord can send an evil spirit on that person, right? So that person might act this way. Or he can send a righteous angel on that same person and they start acting this way, right? A natural man's not going to understand it. They're just going to be like, oh, he acting weird. Oh, he was being nice today. 
right? They're not going to understand. They're not going to have that spiritual discernment to understand things that are spiritual. It's, it, things are going to be too high for them, right? So they're not going to understand these things. But those that have the Holy Spirit, they're going to have that spirit of truth. They're going to understand. They're going to have that spiritual discernment, right? John chapter 16 and verse 13 says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, right? So when you get the Holy Spirit on you, that's what's going to guide you. That's what's going to navigate your actions, right? Many, many, many brothers, A, hey, when I came into this truth, I was deep in the conspiracy theories. That was the Holy Spirit guiding you. He was giving you a journey, a path that you had to go through, right? He will guide you into all truth because through these conspiracy theory videos, then some uh, random video might come up with somebody talking about Israelites or you might catch a, a random street teaching, right? Or the, the spirit might guide you to talk to this person or that person. And now all of a sudden you seeing this and you seeing that. Now you're seeing brothers with fringes. You ride it off one time, but then you see somebody else with fringes. They break it down to you. And now you in this thing. That's the Holy Spirit guiding you. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come, right? And there's a lot of brothers that get into prophecy, right? Can break down prophecy, right? Can jump into, uh, jump into these different books of prophecy and break them down, right? That's the Holy Spirit doing that. A man, a natural man can't just pick up the Bible, uh, and read Isaiah and just know what's going on. No, you got to have that Holy Spirit break it down for you, to guide you and to lead you, to have you ask the right questions to the right person so you get deeper and a further understanding. But you're not going to understand it if you're not an Israelite that's keeping the commandments. See that? So come, we jump into um, 2nd Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 22. 2nd Ezra 14 and 22. <laughs> Salaki. Right? 14 and 22 says, But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, and I shall write all that have been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law. Right? So Ezra is, you know, asking the Most High, hey, if you send down your spirit, I'm going to write everything that was written down in your law. I'm going to write it for you, right? I'm going to write it over, right? For what reason? That men may find thy path and that they which will live in the latter days may live. You see that? He's saying the people that's living in the latter days may live, right? That's letting you know that you have people with heartbeat. You got blood pumping through your through your body. You can see, taste, smell, and all of that, but you're still spiritually dead, right? The spirit quicker, right? He's saying, which live in the latter days may live. So this is how you get that Holy Spirit, right? Keep these commandments, get into your Bible. Get into this Bible, get the understanding, right? Uh, 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 congregate with like-minded brothers, right? And, and, and let's keep these commandments. Fear the most high and love your brother and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Your neighbor is your brother, your fellow Israelites. You gotta love them as you love yourself. That's how you come alive in these days, right? Not damn uh, just you being born and, and living how you want to live and thinking that you living. No, that's not, that's not living. That's not true living according to the most high, right? John chapter 8 and verse 29. Right, John chapter 8 and verse 29 says this, is Yahweh speaking. And he that sent me is with me. The Father have not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Right? Verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Verse 31. Then said Yahweh to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, right? Continue to keep these commandments. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right? The truth shall make you free. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. 
That's how you get that freedom that Yahweh Shah is talking about. The spirit of truth has to, has to dwell in you. The spirit of truth has to come down on you. And that's how you get the understanding of what's going on and how you uh, how you have the Holy Spirit. Right? This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Right? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? You see that? So the Holy Spirit is going to be in you. When you got the Holy Spirit in you, hey, that's, you're the temple, right? Every Israelite is the temple of the Most High, but those that are keeping the commandments and fearing the judgments of the Lord, these are the ones that the Spirit is going to be dwelling in, right? Verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You see that? So if you're defiling your temple, right? You getting damn tattoos, right? You getting piercings all over the place. You damn cutting yourself, right? Men shaving their hair bald. Women uh, dressed in an unmodest apparel, right? These things, these smoking, eating pork, these things defile your temple. And the Lord is saying, if you defile your temple, especially if you willingly defile your temple against knowing the commandments, the Lord's going to destroy you, right? For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So you're supposed to be set apart. You're not supposed to be doing everything that everybody else is doing because you're set apart. The Lord chose you, you know, out of the darkness to his marvelous light. That's a, that's, that's a gift to even understand that you're an Israelite. That's a gift all in itself. But now you got to do something about it. You got to keep his commandments, right? You might have get an example of the Holy Spirit in action, right? This is the history of Susanna, right? History of Susanna. And I'm going to start at verse, uh, I'm going to start at verse 45. Therefore, when she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young youth whose name was Daniel, right? So Susanna had false accusations against her, right? She's about to get led and put to death. The Holy Spirit came upon Daniel. The Lord put the Holy Spirit on Daniel. Right? That spirit of remembrance, the comforter, the spirit of truth. Right? Discerning. Right? That same spirit to discern. Verse 46. Right? Well, the end of 45 says, whose name was Daniel. Verse 46. Who cried with a loud voice, I am clear from the blood of this woman. Then all the people turned them toward him and said, what mean these words that thou spoken, that thou hast spoken? Right? That spirit of discernment hopped on Daniel and he said, hey, her blood is not on my hands. Like I'm I'm cleansed of that. I'm not I'm not with y'all with putting her to death. Right? Verse 48. So he standing in the midst of them said, Are ye such fools, ye sons of Israel, that without examination or knowledge of the truth, ye have condemned a daughter of Israel? Right? So they saying, yeah, yeah, they might, she might have two witnesses against her, but as Israelites, as as the the Most High's chosen people, as the wisdom, as the people that wisdom is supposed to be dwelling with, we're not going to examine the matter. You're just going to put one of your daughters, like one of your sisters, to death, right? Verse forty nine. Return again to the place of judgment, for they have borne false witness against her, right? He didn't say he think or he feel like it. He knew it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit came on him and revealed that to him. Discerned the wicked thoughts of these men and put it in him to let him stand up before them and to declare that, hey, they bear false witness against this woman. That's the Holy Spirit in action, right? When you're around certain people or you're around uh, certain situations and you just all of a sudden know how to maneuver, that's the Holy Spirit. Lord willing, but I hope it ain't no uh, demon leading you in the wickedness and the damnation and the darkness. See that? So that's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth, bringing all things to remembrance. The Holy Spirit is what's going to guide you to all truth. See that? The Holy Spirit is not damn that 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 uh, speaking in tongues gibberish that they say that they speak about in these churches. That's not what it is at all. Right. Because in Acts chapter one. So like in verse eight. He said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me 
both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. Right? So that's what he's saying. Now, when you jump down to um, Acts 2 and verse 4, it says, And they were all filled. So I'm going to start at 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? So the Holy Spirit came down on all of the disciples. Right? All of these apostles. Right? And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Speaking in tongues. It says speaking in other tongues. Right? That is not saying that uh that's not that right speaking in other tongues you get the clarification and the understanding of that when you jump down to verse seven right i'm gonna start this i'm gonna just keep reading read verse five and there were dwelt at jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven you have Jews in Jerusalem from under every nation under heaven. Verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Why were they confounded? Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Speaking in tongues is speaking in different languages. The Lashawan Kodash, that means holy tongue. So when you speak in different languages in the Bible, when you see somebody uh, speaking in a tongue, that's a language. That's not gibberish or something that don't nobody know what's going on. That's an actual language. Verse seven says, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not these which speak Galileans? Because they came up in Israel. They came up in Judea, right? They're Galileans. Verse eight. And how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, wherein we were born. Languages that they understand from the land that they were born in. Because if I pick up right now and go to Germany, I don't speak German. But if the Holy Spirit jumped on me and I started speaking German fluently, that's basically an understanding of what's happening here. Right? It's not whatever whatever the hell be going on in church. That's not speaking in tongues. This is the real that's the real speaking in tongues is speaking an actual language. When brothers are speaking Spanish to people that speak Spanish, that's speaking in tongues so they can get the understanding of the word so the word can go out. What profit is that what profit does that have? None. Right? So now we're gonna get into baptism. Baptism. John chapter 4 and verse 1. John 4 and 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Yahweh Shah made and baptized, made and baptized more disciples than John. So was Yahweh Shah out there baptizing people? Verse 2. Though Yahweh Shah himself baptized not, but his disciples. See that? Yahweh Shah wasn't out there baptizing people. The disciples were baptizing people. The disciples were baptizing people. But Yahweh Shah wasn't. Let's go to John verse uh, chapter 1 and verse 33. This is John the Baptist speaking. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. You see that? So the baptism is going into the Holy Ghost. Right? The Holy Ghost resting on you. Right? Let me get another uh, another witness to that. Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 3. And verse 11. Right? This is John the Baptist again. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Right? And you got John, you got John the Baptist. He, he giving, uh, giving his reverence to Yahweh Shah. Right? As we all should. Whose shoes, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you 
with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You see that? Y'all was not out here baptizing people with water. So if you're going to be a Christian and you're going to be a follower of Christ, then water baptism, that's that's not what Yahweh Shah requires you to do. Right? Yahweh Shah baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Right? The Holy Spirit. When brothers and sisters come from calling themselves uh, a black man to an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right? They, I'm not a Puerto Rican anymore. I'm an I'm a Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. You see what I'm saying? I'm not from this place. I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Naphtali. I'm not from here. I'm an Israelite from the tribe of hate. I mean, from the tribe of Levi. You see what I'm saying? That's baptizing with the Holy Spirit, right? It said, also it said, and with fire, right? And when Yahweh Shah come back on earth, he's going to cleanse the earth, right? With fire, right? That's baptism. And that's, that's going to be the earth being baptized, the earth being renewed, right? When you get the earth renewed, the first time it happened with the flood, and this time it's going to happen with the fire, right? Getting um, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Ephesians 4 and verse 22 says, That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man. That ye put off the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust." Right? Verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Being renewed in the spirit of your mind, that's baptism. Right? That's your spirit being renewed. Right? I've had um brothers or people see me, right? They meet me and then they they'll see my Facebook posts or old Facebook uh, uh pictures and be like, damn, you don't look like the same guy. And I'm like, I'm not. Because I'm a whole new person. I'm a whole new man. I'm a new creature in Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. I'm not that same guy anymore. Right? So with that being said, the baptism is going into the renewing of your mind. The baptism is having that Holy Spirit fall upon you and uh, and guide you. Right? Having that, that spirit of truth teaching you all things. Having that uh, comforter bringing things to remembrance. Right? Right? Salaki. Verse 24 says, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Right. And, you know, in my heart of hearts, I honestly want to be holy and set apart for the most high. Right. And yeah, brothers and sisters, we slip up. Right. Everybody got to repent daily because it's all you always going off. We always going off. But at the end of the day, if your heart is really set to try to please the most high to keep his commandments to repent daily right to love your brother and to and to do so like it was right and righteous in the eyes of the most high searching out matters and and doing what the lord requires us to do that's that's that holy spirit working in you that's the holy spirit working in you that's not you just doing something just to be doing it or you just out here uh uh doing something just because you think it's right no, the spirit, the spirit hops on people to make them do certain things, right? This is Acts chapter one and verse five. Jehovah Shai speaking. It says, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, right? So once again, baptism, going into that Holy Spirit coming upon you, right? Acts nine and 17. Acts 9 and 17. And, and, and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahweh Shah that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest hath sent me. So Ananias is speaking to Saul, right? Whose name, be, who became Paul, right? Ananias is telling Saul, hey, Yahweh Shah sent you here and he sent me to you. Right, let's see what happened with, with Saul. Hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? So Ananias was sent to restore Saul's sight and that Saul may receive the Holy Ghost. Verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales and he received sight forwith and arose and was baptized. You see that? 
Saul had the scales fall off his eyes. He received the Holy Spirit and he was baptized. It didn't say he went out and got in some water. He didn't go to the church, right? To the basement of the church and get dipped in cold water. No, the spirit came on him. Then he was baptized, right? Acts chapter 19, and I'm gonna start at verse three. Acts 19 and three. And he said unto them, unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism, right? They got baptized with water. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, right? So he, John told you to believe in the person that comes after him, which was Yahweh Shah, right? Verse five says, when they heard this, when they heard this, verse five says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shah. You see that? So baptism is gone into the renewing of your mind. Because when they heard this, when they got the understanding, when that truth hit them, that, hey, you're baptized by John the Baptist unto repentance. And John the Baptist told you to follow him that comes after him, which is Yahweh Shah. That's when they were baptized. They were baptized with water. Now they're baptized in the spirit. So this thing is spiritual. The Holy Spirit, right? The baptism is spiritual. The baptism is the Holy Spirit coming on you, right? Coming down on you. This is uh, Acts chapter 8 and verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, right? And the name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, they were baptized, both men and women. Right? I'm going to read that again. Verse 12. Right? Acts 8 and 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things, when they believed what he said, concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, they were baptized, both men and women. Right? So once you get that understanding, the spirit of truth sucked with you, and now you start having that faith, and you believe in the things that are written, that's you being baptized. That's your true baptism, right? That's you getting real understanding, right? Right? Let me get this in Psalms uh, 73 and 13. <laughs> Salakia. Psalms chapter 73 and verse 13. Right? And that's being born again. That's the, the, the true baptism is letting go of that old man, right? You're being renewed in your mind. And once you're being renewed in your mind, now you're, you're being born again, right? Now you got to take everything that you done, you was taught before and you got to relearn it in righteousness because everything you learned was a lie. They might give you a little bit of truth and then a whole bunch of lies. So you got to take and throw everything out and relearn it with the full truth and knowledge of the most high in, this, in, this, in these scriptures, right? Psalms. 73 and verse 13. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency, in innocency, salaki, right? So that's another uh, part of being baptized is cleansing your mind, right? You got to cleanse your hands, right? Cleanse your heart, right? Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. So you got to cleanse your mind. You got to cleanse your heart, right? Let me get this in um, Psalms 119 and 9, right? Psalms 119 and verse 9 says, Wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his way, right? How are you going to get baptized? How are you going to clean yourself? How are you going to wash yourself, right? How are you going to wash your ways? How are you going to be renewed, right? How are you going to drop off the old dirty self and put on a new clean self by taking heed there. So like it by taking heed there too, according to thy word, right? According to thy word with my whole heart, have I sought thee? Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So keeping the commandments, right? Bringing it back full circle, keeping the commandments and, and seeking out matters. That's what's going to bring that Holy Spirit upon you. 
right? That's what's going to bring the Holy Spirit on you, the comforter on you, that spirit of truth on you. And once the spirit of truth is coming on to you, now you're being baptized, right? Believing in Yahweh Shah, believing in the Old, the New Testament, the Apocrypha, believing that you have to understand and learn this word and teach this word precept upon precept, right? Believing these things and searching out these matters, that's the real baptism, right? That's the real renewing of your mind. That's the cleansing, right? That Holy Spirit is a cleansing agent, right? Let me get this in James 4 and 8. James chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, draw nigh unto the Most High, and he will draw nigh unto you, keeping his commandments. Draw nigh unto the Most High, and he will draw nigh unto you, Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded, right? So you got to cleanse yourself in this word, right? Cleanse yourself in the living waters, which is Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the Holy Spirit coming down onto you, right? You got to cleanse yourself. You have to be cleansed in order for you to serve the most high in righteousness, right? Let me get this last precept, and I'm going to close up, right? So 1 Corinthians chapter 12 i'm gonna start at verse one it says now concerning spiritual gifts brethren i would not have you ignorant right now ye know so like you ye know that you were gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as you were led right so we were all led away captives right and under dumb idols Right. You got the damn Mecca stone for Islam. You got the damn wooden cross for Christianity. Right. These are the dumb idols. Right. We were led away to these dumb idols. And that's speaking for us nowadays. Right. Back then, they had all different kinds of idols. I mean, we still got all different kinds of idols to this day. But right. But he's saying that when you were under those things, when you were under these different idols and these idolatries and uh, doing these different religions. Right. You were um you were a Gentile. You were in a Gentile state of mind, right? You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Yahweh Shah a curse, and that no man can say that Yahweh Shah is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit is gonna to have to reveal to you that Yahweh Shah is the Lord. Right. The Holy Spirit is going to have to reveal to you that Yahweh Shah is that king. Right. That he's he's that one. The Holy Spirit has to reveal that to you. He has to also reveal to you that you're an Israelite, that you need to keep the commandments. Right. That this world has been lying to you for years and years. The whole time you've been living, this world has been lying to you and it will continue to lie to you. Right. You've been deceived all your time. But this Holy Spirit, that spirit of truth is going to bring that uh that righteous thoughts, these righteous thoughts and these righteous spirits to you, right? And understand it. Verse four. Now, therefore, so like, and now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. You got different gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, right? It's only one Yahweh Shah Mashiach, right? You got different camps, right? You got different camps, then we might have different doctrines. Right. You got all these different things going on, but we're all under that that umbrella of being Israelites. Right. You're an Israelite. You got to repent and keep the commandments. At the end of the day, we all agree on that. That's what makes us one in this thing. Right. No pride here. Right. Verse six. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. Right. So the most high works in everything. Right? He works in every spirit, whether it's uh, wicked or righteous, the Most High is dwelling in everything. He's making the evil angels make evil happen. He's making the righteous angels make righteousness happen. But the Most High is in control of all of this. Right? Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So that spirit manifesting in you and you uh, having these different gifts and able to operate in these different offices and administration, that's all from the most high through the Holy Spirit, right? These things only happen through the Holy Spirit, 
right? Verse 8, for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, right? To another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work of that one and the self same spirit, right? So that spirit of truth is bringing about all of these different gifts, right? So as an Israelite in this truth, you got to find out what your gift is and you got to magnify that thing, right? You got to, if you don't know what it is, you got to pray that the most high reveal it to you and you got to do your best to magnify it, right? I hear people telling me that, um, you know, I'm a mighty reader or whatever. And, you know, all praises to the most high. I take that humbly. But knowing that when I'm at camp, hey, I'm trying to read, I'm trying to get in this thing. Right. Because I understand now that that's a gift and I have to bear that burden and I got to put this work in. Right. If you a mighty teacher, you got to be you, you got to be willing to go out there and teach. You got to be uh, excited to go teach. Right. You got to be looking for opportunities to go teach. And then you have to be figuring out ways to make you a better teacher. Right. I have to figure out ways to make me a better reader, how to get to the precepts faster. How can I make my voice louder? Right. How can I uh, uh, pronounce things so that when it goes out, people can hear it and understand it and it draws them in. Right. How can I speak to the spirits that the spirit want to come into this truth? How do I do it? We got to figure these things out. The Lord put it on you to do music. Hey, figure out the best way to make music to get to these uh, to get to these spirits and, and shake the spirit in these people. Right. Because the Lord wants that house filled. Talking about the kingdom. He want that kingdom filled. Right? I'm going to read verse 11 again. But all these work of that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Right? Verse 12. For all, so like if for as the body is one and have many members and all the members of that body one body being many are one body so also is Hamashiach right so we all got these different gifts but all of these different gifts work together under one body which is Yahweh right and so we need to be magnifying magnifying whatever gifts we got so that the body can be stronger right because as we out there doing these uh, uh performing these gifts these talents that the Most High gave us every time we go to do something in righteousness Right. Something. Uh, some either might 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 damn lose power or in, at a company or something. You get what I'm saying? Every time you go out there and you pray and you prophesy. Right. And you, you put forth your best foot and you and you exercise the gift that the most High gave you or your spiritual, uh, your spiritual gifts. That's causing a ripple effect because that got to be balanced. So when you come up in righteousness. There's some wickedness going on too. So we got to make sure that we are uh, doing our best to be that righteous half of the most high, to bring his righteousness up, to strengthen the body of Yahweh Shah, because we are the members of the body, right? We are the, the bricks in this temple. So we got to strengthen it as much as we can. So we got to magnify whatever gifts that we have, right? And that takes self-examination. That takes self-examination. Right. Verse 15. Salaki. Salaki. Verse 13. For by one spirit, we are all baptized. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Right. These Gentiles are talking about Israelites that um, that that strayed away from uh, the most high and keeping his commandments. These Gentiles is not other nations, right? Whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit, right? So that's the uh, Holy Spirit and baptism. Baptism is having that Holy Spirit, right? The comforter, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost. Baptism is having the Holy Ghost come down on you and teach you all things, 
bringing things into remembrance and guiding you through this life, right? And with that, we give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Shalom. Endure.